So let us uh, look at how does the things change. Let us find the area of the region D in the xy plane. Okay, I am going to give a very simple little illustration of the change of variable. In the xy plane bounded by these lines x plus y equal to 1, x minus 2 y equal to 0, x minus 2 y equal to minus 4 and x plus y equal to 4. These are so, we are looking at a uh, region in the xy plane whose area we want to find out. Okay. So, how does the uh, what is this uh, object? So, what is uh, the area is area is bounded by x plus y equal to 1 and x plus y equal to 4 and the other two lines are x minus 2 y equal to 0 x minus equal to 4. So, this is in the x y plane. So, let us see what does it look like. Right. So, what is this x plus y equal to 1? What is that? That is a line passing through the points on the x axis passing through the point uh, when right. So, let us uh, draw that line x plus y equal to 4 is the same line basically, right, but it has been shifted where, where it goes now 4. So, when for example, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 4. So, it goes to this line somewhere here. Okay. They do not look parallel, but assume they are parallel. Okay. The figure is badly drawn, it is okay. And then x minus 2 y equal to 0, right. So, what is that line? So, is a line passing through the origin, right. So, x is equal to 2 y. So, it is a line passing through the origin. So, where is this line? x is equal to 2 of y. So, when it is equal to 1, this is 1 that is equal to 2. So, it goes like this, right. And x minus 2 y equal to 4. So, where is that? Shifted, right. So, somewhere is it okay? No? it should be shifted other side. So, this side. So, this will be a parallelogram right. Of course, uh, ordinary geometry you can use it to give a parallelogram what is the area and all that right. But we want to transform this parallelogram into a object whose area is easy to find. So, what is the transformation we should be doing? So, that is what we are looking at. So, the region is a parallelogram in the x y plane. Okay. So, uh, okay. so, what do you think I should be change of variable I should be making? x plus y I should call it as some variable u and x minus 2 y as a variable v. So, let us make that change and see what happens. So, x plus y equal to u and x minus 2 y equal to v. So, what is my function g 1 here? g 1 is obtained by writing x as a function of u and v. So, I have to write what is x is equal to what is y equal to from these two. Right? So, what is x is equal to from these two equations? If you multiply by 2 right, and add, so what do you get? Right, you can write x and y. 
variables. Once you have gotten x, this is your g1 and this is your g2. Find out the partial derivative of g1 and partial derivative of g2 with respect to x and y. Compute the Jacobian. Okay. Once you do that, so Jacobian of g1 partial derivative of g1 with respect to u partial derivative of g1 with respect to v. So from these two equations, you'll get partial derivative of uh, g2 with respect to u partial derivative of g2 with respect to v. Compute that and take the absolute value of that. Right. So once you do that, you will find that in this particular case, it comes out a nice thing. It is just one by three. That Jacobian absolute value is one by three. I want you to compute yourself later on. Okay. Now, what happens to these lines? More important is what happens to these lines? X plus y. In uv plane, what does it look like? That is u equal to one, and u equal to four. Right. So, in the uv plane, this is v and this is u. Here was x y. The domain was the parallelogram. So, here it is u equal to one and u equal to four. So, here it is one and here it is four. And v equal to zero and v equal to four. Okay. So, v equal to zero and v equal to four. So, it is this. In the UV plane, it is a rectangle, right? Whose area we can easily write without doing anything. The length into. So that is the basic idea that transformation of the coordinates, change of variables can help you to write the domain in a simpler form, where it may be easier to compute. For example, this is both of type one and type two, right? Rectangle. Whereas a parallelogram, as such, is neither Type one or type two, you may have to cut it into many parts to write it right. If you want to compute via integration, so that is the advantage of uh, this kind of uh, change of variable. So let us look at some more examples. So let us look at this. The domain is y between zero and two, and x. So this is at what type of domain it is? Is type one or type two? Type two. Y is between something zero and c and d, and x is lie between function of y. Okay, and we want to integrate this function. F x y is equal to y cube two x minus y e raised to the power something and something. Okay, so what will the double integral look like? Domain is very nice and easy, right? So I can compute it. So zero to two, iterated integral, Fubini's theorem, integral from y by two to y plus four by two of this function. Right. Now this says to, if I want to compute this, I have to make a change of variable that will be easier for me to because it is two x minus y and two x minus y that power is coming. Right. So it says that I should make a change of variable. Right, I should call two x minus y equal to another variable. So let us make that change and see what it comes out. So u equal to two x minus y, and y variable we don't have to change. So v equal to y. So once again, when you solve these two equations, you have to write x in terms of u and v, y in terms of u and v. Right. So Solve these two equations. You get x is equal to that is the function g1 that is u plus v by 2. Solving this, and y is equal to v that is as it is. So that is the function g2. Okay. So you get the function g1, g2. How do you get g1 and g2 by solving the substitution and in solving it for x and y. So now let us find out the uh, Jacobian partial derivative of g1 with respect to u. So what will be that partial derivative of this function with respect to u? So that is one by one by two. 
partial derivative of g uh, g1 with respect to v that also is 1 by 2 so the first row is going to be 1 by 2 1 by 2 partial derivative of g2 with respect to u that is 0 because it is only purely a function of v and partial derivative of g2 with respect to v that is 1 so you get the jacobian 1 by 2 1 by 2 0 and 1 so the jacobian okay and you solve it you get 1 by 2 right so how does a transformed integral look like we we'll have to write this also so uh, the previous one we have not yet computed the domain keep in mind this is the domain d we have to find how does it look like in the uv plane also right so let us find that so we have to solve our equations again so we have to see where does we are putting y equal to v so y equal to 0 where does that go y was equal to v so that goes to v equal to 0 the domain bounded by those lines we have to transform them how they look like in the uv plane so each boundary line will have to be transformed right so y equal to 0 y equal to 2x so put the value v was equal to u plus y so that gives you u equal to 0 so v equal to 0 2x is equal to this. What is our 2x plus 2x minus 4? That gives you u equal to 4. Right? Solving those same equations, the domain is given by those lines. So how does these lines look like in UV plane? That is what is to be solved using those same equations, substitutions. That 2x minus y was equal to u, and y was equal to v. So using that, you get these are the lines. okay so what is the domain in e in the uv plane that gets transformed into the domain d that is what we want will be v equal to 0 v equal to 4 so u lies between 0 and 4 v lies between 0 and 2 from these equations right from the these equations okay these give me that e must be this domain so what is the transformed integral integral of fxy dx dy right will be equal to integral of f in terms of u and v right x is a function of u and v f of g1 uv comma g2 uv into jacobian of the transformation in du dv over this domain so integral over this domain which is a rectangle okay so integral over e right that function so remember that function let us just right go back and see what was that function this was the function what as y y is v so v cube 2x minus y is u so v cube u e raised power u square jacobian du dv right so Write that. So v cube u e raised to the power u square Jacobian is half du dv, and this e is nice now. It is both of type one and type two. So what has happened is not only our integrand has become nice by the change of variable, our domain has also become nice. So that integral becomes very simple. You can split zero to two, right? With respect to v, with respect to u. And when you integrate u e raised to the power u square, right? So that we can we know with one variable how to integrate. Derivative is sitting next, so integrate you get the variable. So change of variable we are using only when either our domain becomes nice or the integrand becomes nice, right? So let us see how do we apply this to our. Uh, so for the polar coordinates. Theta r, theta comma r, oh sorry, r comma theta r is between zero to infinity. Theta is between zero and two pi. R theta goes to x y, and what is x? R cos theta, r sin theta. So g one is r cos theta, g two is. So x is written in terms of r and theta, u and v. Here u and v are replaced by r and theta. And 
second variable g2 is y and that is r sin theta. So, what is the Jacobian of this transformation? First row g1 with respect to r, g1 with respect to theta, second with respect to r, second. So, first with respect to r, so cos theta with respect to second variable, right? g1 with respect to theta. So, that will be minus r sin theta, similarly the other one. So, when you uh, do that transformation, uh, calculate the Jacobian, what does it come out? Right? Partial derivative of r cos theta with respect to r, that is cos theta. Partial derivative of r cos theta with respect to theta, right? Um, so, that gives you sin theta. Okay, there is a uh, second one with respect to r and with respect to theta. So, that gives you Jacobian is r. So, it says when you transform f r cos theta, r sin theta and dx dy changes to r dr d theta. Right? So, that normally we start using uh, in our school without uh, any hesitation, but this is a a special case of change of variable. And what is this uh, domain D? You have to write domain D in terms of polar coordinates, right? E is in Cartesian coordinates, but that has to be interpreted in terms of the polar coordinates. So, D gets transformed into E by change of variable. So, that has to be done. So, let us look at probably some uh, examples of that. So, let us look at this thing. We want to integrate x square plus y dxy, where d is the domain lying between two circles. So, that is the annulus portion. Domain is the annulus portion. Okay. So, if you want, you can try to do it by cutting the annulus region into domains of type 1 and type 2, right, and then adding up all those integrals. But we understand that if we look at the domain between two circles, it is very easy to explain that domain in terms of polar coordinates. Right? So, that domain, what it will look like? It is a region between two circles. Right? So, r goes from the inner limit to the outer limit, smaller radius to the bigger radius and theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. So, very easily described. Right? So, we make a change of variable and use the transformation. So, what will x square look like? r square cos square theta y r sin theta. So, r square cos square theta plus r sin theta integrated over r goes from 1 to 2, inner radius is 1, outer radius is 2, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, r dr d theta. right? So, let us put those values and see what it comes out. So, this is what it comes out. So, r square cos square theta, r sin theta, 0 to 2 pi, 1 to 2 r dr d theta. And now, you integrate out this quantity, right, as a function of r, as a function of theta, one variable at a time. Okay. So, because the domain was easier to uh, explain, we did that. So, there are many examples, I think let us not do all, some of them you should read yourself, uh, f x y equal to y square over uh, the domain x square over a square plus. So, what will the transformation you will think of doing there? It is x square over a square plus y square over b square. So, you should not be putting r, it should be in terms of a and b, polar coordinates slightly. So, once you want to represent a ellipse in terms of polar coordinates, right, that will come here. Okay. So, a r cos theta, a r sin theta. So, you make that a r cos theta, b r sin theta and make the transformation and do it. So, read that. Okay. Calculate the Jacobian. So, finally, it comes out r a b and uh, 0 1 cross 0 to 2 pi because we have already put a r. Okay. 
So, it becomes very nice to compute. So, I leave it as it is. Try to do it yourself, these problems. Now, let us come to cylindrical coordinates. So, I am going to revise again what we described last time. So, given a point x, y and z in R 3, you can describe the point also in terms of what are called cylindrical coordinates. You can imagine the point lying on a cylinder in the tip of a cylinder right? and cylinders are expanding and how much where on the cylinder you should be going. So, it is described by r, r is the distance of the point, how much is you are away from the origin and then you are doing the cylinder. So, theta is 0 to 2 pi z is as it is. Okay? So, these are the cylindrical coordinates. What is the relation between them? x is equal to r cos theta, y is equal to r sin theta, z remains as it is, z we are not changing, cylinder. Okay? So, with that, what, let us compute the Jacobian of this. So, Jacobian will be a 3 by 3 now, because there are 3 variables coming into picture. So, this is g 1, r cos theta, g 2, r sin theta, g 3 okay, equal to z. So, calculate the Jacobian for this and you simplify it comes out just r, because z does not change, only the polar coordinates are making a change. right? So, x and y should give you r. Okay? So, it is Jacobian is just r as in polar coordinates. So, the change of variable formula will give you f in terms of r theta and z. Of course, e has to be written in terms of cylindrical coordinates and dr r d r d theta d z as it is. So, d x d y d z goes to r d r d theta d z. Z coordinate we are not changing, z is z only, x is r cos theta, y is r sin theta. So, that change comes. Once again, why we should be doing that? Depends upon what kind of integral you want to. Let us do the spherical also and then we do the you remember spherical coordinates, how did we describe the spherical coordinates? You imagine all of R 3 as concentric spheres. Okay? So, every point in the space will rely on some sphere of some radius. So, let us say the radius is rho. Right? If the radius is rho, let us see that position vector O p, how much is the angle that is making with the z axis. Right? If we know that angle, right? so imagine a rod which is rotating with that angle. So, that will give me a circle on the sphere of radius rho. So, all the points on the circle of radius rho can be described right? by looking at the polar coordinates for that points on the circle and looking at this rho. Right? So, as this angle changes, you will get different circles. So, on the sphere of radius rho, you get different circles. right? So, these are what are longitudes and latitudes in uh, describing the position of any particle on earth, but we call them as spherical coordinates, because we imagine the whole of R 3 as concentric spheres. So, what was the relation with the uh, respect to, so what is it required? You need how much is the angle with the z axis, right? that is phi how much is the distance that is rho and on the thing how much you are rotating point on the circle. So, you need how much angle you are going to make theta. So, rho angle phi and angle theta. So, rho theta and phi are the three um, variables that will determine a point on uh, in space by looking at the spheres. And what is the relation between that? So, that rho if you recall, we said when you drop a perpendicular that is same as z and the angle being phi, so that gives you right the radius being rho sin phi and then polar coordinates that is the radius of that circle. Okay? So, once you know the radius, you know the polar coordinates. So, this is the relation phi rho is the distance of the point from origin that is rho bigger than 0, theta is the angle on that circle. So, that is 0 and 2 pi and phi is the angle with respect to z axis 
so that is theta is 0 to pi okay from top to the bottom so relation is that z coordinate is rho cos phi and the remaining things instead of uh, rho cos phi sin phi rho cos phi sin phi so these are the relations and now we have to find the so change of variable from spherical coordinates you are going to cartesian coordinates rho theta and phi goes to x y and z so g1 g2 so this is your g1 the first one y that is a g2 function and z that is a g3 function so 3 by 3 determinant you have to compute okay so one can do that partial derivative of x with respect to rho partial derivative of x with respect to uh, theta partial derivative of x with respect to phi that is the first row second row third row so if you compute that that is what it looks like and you simplify and use your trigonometric relations that sin square phi plus cos square phi is equal to 1 sin square theta cos square theta is equal to 1 and so on so you get the jacobian is simply rho square sin phi it does not depend upon theta the change of variable only the phi angle right that you make with the z axis here is a minor thing uh, which probably see we are taking angle phi the position vector makes with the z axis right so phi goes from 0 to pi top to bottom right but uh, as far as uh, uh, position of the earth is concerned one likes to measure it from a great circle which we call it as meridian right and then the angle is measured how much up you should go and how much down you should go so that phi is taken as from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 so in all uh, gps uh, calculations they take it phi as going from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 so there are two ways of writing only the only change comes with changing phi to phi minus pi minus theta so accordingly change can come okay but that doesn't matter spherical coordinates will be using that so that gives me the relation change of variable right right so let us uh, look at probably some examples find the volume of the solid cut from the sphere x square plus y square plus z square equal to 1 from the cylinder x square equal to y minus half square equal to 1 by 4 so can you try to imagine that what it find the volume of the solid region cut from the sphere so it is a part of the sphere right and there is a cylinder so what is that cylinder x square plus y minus half square equal to 1 by 4 what is that cylinder there is no z so it is moving vertically right but the axis is not passing through the region it is a circular cylinder right when z is equal to 0 what is the circle you cut that is x square plus y minus half whole square equal to so it is off origin on the y axis so the center of that circle will be 0 comma 1 by 2 so it is off so when you go off and you vertically right you will get a part of the sphere inside the cylinder so how do you find out what is this looks like a, look like a complicated problem right find out the volume of this solid okay so because there is a cylinder involved and there is a sphere involved so probably we can think of cylindrical coordinates or spherical coordinates right change of variable okay so let us uh, make a change of variable so this is what the picture looks like so this is a sphere and the here is a cylinder right so cylinder is only one side y equal to 1 by 2 x is equal to 0 so that is the center so that is the cylinder going okay so you want to describe this 
in terms of say cylindrical coordinates or spherical coordinates which one will be easier so let us look at cylindrical coordinates because it is a cylinder involved in it okay so the domain d can be written as r theta and z that is the cylindrical coordinates right where does r vary and where does z remain z as it is right what is z what is the top of the surface and what is the bottom of the surface for that right it is a part of the sphere so top sphere and the bottom of the sphere that is the top part of the solid and bottom part of the solid so z is not going to be a problem we can write from the equation of the sphere what is the top what is the bottom z goes from minus right part of the sphere to the top of the sphere the positive part only thing is what are r and theta right so if you look at uh, the your circle this is what the circle looks like angle is theta here right any position vector how much is the angle that it makes okay so what is your uh, this distance r this uh, this is your r angle is theta polar coordinates you have to calculate r okay so if this angle is theta what is this and you, you can draw a perpendicular here if you like so right angle triangle you can calculate in terms of theta so that gives you the uh, r see r will start when your bottom will start at zero right and then it will go up to the vertical one so r is equal to sin theta when theta is equal to pi by 2 it will be the full of right it starts with zero to the top is it okay the bottom circle see this it is not circle centered at zero zero it is off center right so i have to describe that in terms of r and theta the off center circle so that is given by r is equal to sin theta theta between 0 and pi right theta goes from 0 to pi only and z goes from bottom to the top so one so what is z sphere x square plus y square plus z square equal to 1 so what is z 1 minus x square plus y square plus but x square plus y square that is equal to right x plus y that is equal to r so 1 minus r square 1 plus r square okay x and y polar coordinates so that is so it becomes r goes from so r goes from 0 to pi theta goes from uh, 0 to uh, theta goes from 0 to pi and uh, z goes from this region r is equal to sin theta so that gives you so the domain splits nicely okay in polar coordinates are you following what i'm saying how the domain looks like in the cylindrical coordinates right in the cylindrical coordinates the cylinder top and bottom are the sphere part of the sphere that is no problem right we have to describe what is r and theta but that is a circle centered at 0 and 1 by 2 right from the origin what is that angle angle is theta so this is a circle centered at 1 by 2 so what is this r in terms of theta right r and theta so r is equal to sin theta because the radius is equal to 1 uh, radius is equal to half so the diameter is equal to 1 are you following or not okay let me just go back to the picture here is the picture so in this this is the origin any position on the circle if this is the angle theta okay then this is the this is vertical is the y axis this is the center is here somewhere in between okay so if you draw a perpendicular here you get a right angle triangle right so you can calculate what is this distance op right that is your r and that is sin theta so that is how do you calculate okay so basically the idea is your domain looks very nice to be explained in terms of cylindrical coordinates because there was a cylinder involved z was not causing any problem it was only x and y let us probably look uh, so you can compute all this integral okay so let us not let us just vary this problem a bit find the volume of the solid cut from the sphere by the cone 
Okay. So, here is a cone z is equal to x square minus y square. Sphere is x square plus y square plus z square equal to 9 and this is a cone cut from the sphere by the cone. So, what does it the object look like? Is a part of the cone inside the sphere basically, right? So, a very familiar figure would be uh, when you go for an ice cream, right? Something a cone and top is a ice cream there, right? It is an ice cream cone kind of a thing, okay? So, now here sphere is involved and a cone is involved. So, what will be the bottom of the uh, in that cone? Z goes from where? It will go from 0, right, to the top of the sphere, wherever the cone is cutting. So, part top will be the that ice cream will be the part of the sphere, right? Is it okay? Bottom is 0, z is z is 0, right? To bottom to z. So, now we want to know whether how best we can describe the cone, whether Cartesian coordinates, this is given by the Cartesian coordinates, okay? Equation z is equal to x square plus y square or you can do it in cylindrical coordinates. What does it look like in cylindrical coordinates? It does not help, right? Z also is varying, cone is also varying in cylindrical coordinates. So, cylindrical coordinates are not of use here. What about spherical coordinates? Can you describe a cone in terms of spherical coordinates? That is the basic question. If you can do, then probably the life will be easy, right? Because we are inside a cone we are inside a cone. So, imagine a cone z is equal to x square plus y square in spherical coordinates inside of a cone, right. So, what does it look like? Actually, when I weighed my hand, in the spherical coordinates, you have to go away from z axis and then you have to rotate. So, when you rotate, what do you get? When you rotate, you are precisely getting a cone, right? So, this line, when you rotate at some angle, it gives you a cone with that angle, right? And top is a sphere. So, the best thing is to use spherical coordinates. So, for this, z is equal to x square plus y square, what is that angle? at what angle, right? If I go very thin angle, thin cone, bigger cone, bigger cone and so on. So, what is that cone? What is the angle of the cone I have to find out? If you can find out that angle, then your problem is solved, right? So, try to find out yourself, I think. Let me, uh, but when I send you the uh, slides, do not look at the solution, try to do it yourself and then try to look at the solution, what that angle should be. It is very nice angle, okay. And once you know that angle, right, that is phi is fixed, phi is equal between 0 and that angle, right, phi is fixed. And what is the projection of that? That is a circle, right, for every point on the cone is a circle. So, you know theta and r, r theta and phi, right? So, that describes fully what is your cone. So, let me, so that is what it looks like, okay? So, it comes out very nicely. Theta, you have to go on the cone. So, 0 to 2 pi, that is your phi and you have to find how much is the r the distance of a point from the cone, okay. So, you find out. So, try to read if you cannot find out. So, there are many examples of this type. So, let me not, uh, uh, I think, go into all of them. So, let me just summarize what we have done, so that we can go ahead a bit. Because there are a lot of examples, you can do a lot of examples. Uh, I would say, if you want to do this thing, 
then uh, you can pick up any book on calculus actually uh, and look at multiple integrals. There are very, uh, I think our library has lot of books on calculus. Uh, you can pick up any one of them to practice visualizing these domains and how do you change them to various coordinates in the plane to polar coordinates in the space, cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates, right. So, the basic is how much is the change coming in the plane dx dy, right, goes to r dr d theta appropriately the limits for theta. For uh, cylindrical coordinates, it is r dr d theta and dz x y z, z does not change and in uh, spherical coordinate is r sin phi, right, dr d theta d phi. Okay. I think we should not be using r in the r 3, we should be using d rho because uh, r and theta, r and rho can confuse. So, distance should be taken as rho, right, rho theta and phi instead of saying r theta and phi, sometimes it can be confusing. Okay. So, uh, basically what we are trying to do is in integration of uh, 2 and uh, 3 variables, we have tried to define what is the integral of a function of 2 or 3 variables over a domain d, right. And uh, we looked at intuitively as for the plane because the graph is a surface, we looked at intuitively it as the volume below the surface, okay. And uh, for functions of R3, you cannot visualize what it, what the triple integral looks like. Why cannot you visualize? Because the graph of a function of three variables is an object in R4, right? And we cannot visualize R4, we live only in R3, okay. But triple integral, when you integrate the function 1, that gives you the volume. So, that is the advantage of it, right. Triple integral gives you the volume of the object. If you are looking at triple integral of d 1, right, that gives you the volume, okay. And if you are looking at double integral, looking at uh, between a surface, that is volume between surfaces or the volume below a surface, okay. So, those are the uh, and as far as computation is concerned of 2 variable or 3 variable is the done by Fubini's theorem, right. You can integrate a function of 2 variables or a function of 3 variables by integrating 1 variable at a time. For 2 variables, your domain should be either of type 1 or type 2, then only Fubini's theorem can be applied. So, what was domain of type 1? x y where x lies between some limits right and y lies between two curves right. So, that is type 1 and type 2 is other way around when your y lies between c and d and when you move along x lies between some curve phi y and some psi y right. Then only Fibonacci theorem is useful. So, it says if a function is integrable over the domain then you can integrate one variable at a time. Okay. Some domains may be interpretable as type 1, some may be interpretable as type 2, some may be of both, some may be of none, right. You may have to cut up into parts and join them by known overlapping and then compute. So, that was of 2 variable and 3 variable, right. Again the same thing, but in the 3 variable your domain D should be either projectable onto x y plane or y z plane or z x plane. So, if it is projectable, your domain is projectable onto x y plane, then what does it mean? Projectable means there is a projection of the domain on the x y plane. So, what is over is a domain in that projection if you stand, then you can reach the domain by going up or down from that point in the domain. So, you have to see how much is the z varying to be inside the domain, right. So, your point x y will lie in the region r which is the projection and z will be from surface to another surface, right. So, that is projectable onto x y plane. Similarly, other 
and if in particular your region r which is a projection onto either of the planes is of type 1 or type 2 in that plane then you can further decompose your two variable integral over the region into one variable at a time so the triple integral can be written as either integral with respect to x then with respect to y and then with respect to z or depending on the type 2 with respect to y and then with respect to x and the innermost is with respect to z that is projectable onto x y plane. So, two possibilities, two iterated integrals and similarly for each plane projectable. So, there are six possible, it will be a good idea you take some region and try to write all possible six iterated integrals for that, right. That will clear all possible doubts in your mind what it is possible. So, that is computation part. Sometimes computation becomes easier by making a change of variable and for the change of variable you have to compute what is the Jacobian of the transformation, find out the absolute value of the Jacobian that is a factor by which you have to multiply dx dy. So, dx dy will be equal to Jacobian right as a function of u and v into du dv. Of course, do not forget to write the domain in terms of u and v and the function in terms of u and v, then only you can integrate because the integration variable is du dv. So, everything has to be in terms of u and v, right. So, that is multiple integrals. So, let me just summarize what we have tried to do till now is we started looking at a function of one variable we looked at limit continuity uh, sequences, limit continuity, differentiability, integration of one variable. Same thing we have tried to do it for functions of several variables. We looked at notion of sequences, we looked at limit, we looked at partial derivatives and differentiability and we looked at integration, right. And all this was possible because there was a notion of distance available on real line or R2 or R3. The notion of limit, everything limit, continuity, differentiability, integration, everything depends on limit, right. You define the concept of limit that is by using closeness, two points are close, images are close, right. In the domain there is a notion of closeness, then the range there is a notion of closeness. Whenever points come close here, points come close there, right. And this closeness allowed us to know, define the notion of differentiability of sequences, oh sorry, convergence of uh, sequences. This allowed us to say when is a function continuous, when the limit is equal to the value of the function. Again the concept of limit, closeness, differentiability. Again differentiability of function of one variable was when the slope of the secant right approaches a value limit. Take a point nearby p and q look at the uh, slope of the secant right f of x f of x plus h divided by h limit again the concept of limit is coming there into picture right. Whether you want to do then derivative applications of derivative second derivative all are limits only. Once you do that, curve sketching becomes possible, right? Maxima, minima, um, and then uh, inflection points, right? Asymptotes, all these things become possible because of the concept of limit, limit of something happening. And all this we did it in R, R2, R3, and it all depended on the notion of distance. So now the question comes can we define a object? which may not be real line, which may not be plane, but it is just the some set x. On that can we define the notion of a distance, closeness? Can we define the notion of closeness on some set, any set? If we want to define the notion of distance on any set, what should be the properties of that function? So, let us just look at what we want to do. x is a set a non empty set. We are given two points x and y belonging to x 
I want to say that x and y are close to each other. That means what? There should be some way of measuring closeness, right? So that is going to be when d x y. That is the notion of a distance between them. What? Is, how much is the distance between them? So this is going to be a number. It is going to be a number. Distance is a number, and distance is always a number which is non-negative, right? And it depends on x and y. It changes as, as x or y change. So this is a function defined on x cross x, taking values in zero to infinity. So a distance function, if we want to define, it should be a function defined on the cross product x cross x, x comma y goes to d of x y, which is bigger than or equal to zero. Right? We want such a function, but any will any function do a job like this? Physical notion of distance. What are the properties of which is the physical notion of distance? Of course, one we have said d x y is bigger than or equal to zero, right? When is it equal to zero? If x is same as y, can it be zero when x is not equal to y? No. So it is equal to zero if and only if x is equal to y. The distance between two points is zero if and only if. If distance is zero, x should be equal to y, and if x is equal to y, then the distance is equal to zero. This is the second property. One, what is the second property? Let us look at the distance between x and y, and distance between y and x. Logic says, physical says that it doesn't matter whether you go from x to y or y to x, so it should be equal. For every x y, and then comes the third point. Let us take three points x, y, and z belonging to x. Look at the distance between x y, distance between x z, and distance between z and y. What is the relation between these three? Can I say distance between x and y? If z is a point in between, say this is equal to this plus this. But what about if it is outside? So let us go back to real line. Let us look at our uh, previous knowledge. On the real line, absolute value gives the notion of distance, right? Distance between two points x and y was absolute value of x minus y, right? So, what is the property of the absolute value function? If x, y, and z are given, distance between x and y, absolute value of x minus y, is not equal to always x minus z plus z minus x. It is not always equal. It is only less than or equal to. Absolute value of x minus y is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus z plus absolute value of z minus y. So, in general, this may be the best possible thing you can expect because one notion of distance which we have used and has given us nice uh, results has this property, right? So, this is these properties. If we want to define notion of distance on any set. That function should have these properties, and whenever the function has these properties, this is called D is called a metric. It is called a metric. Metric is the distance. It is called a metric on X, right? And X, this pair, is called a metric space. It is called a metric space. So it is a pair. X is a set, and D is a function defined on X cross X with these properties. On the same set, you can have more than one notion of distances. 
that will mean what? If in this pair, if either x or d changes, then the metric space changes. You can have real line with absolute value, one metric space. You can have the non-negative real numbers with the same notion of absolute value. That is a different metric space because the set same is not same. So when you say two pair, ordered pair x comma d is same as y comma something. That means x is same as y and other object is same. If either of it changes, your example, your uh, metric space has changed, right? So what we are going to study is look at uh, sets and different examples of notion of distances, right? On the same or different uh, sets, okay? And see what are the things that we have done. I will not be proving everything because this goes into a topic called metric spaces, which is a different, uh, not a different, which is in itself a uh, topic for study. A one semester course can be run on metric spaces, but we'll try to sh at least expose you what are the concepts that carry over in metric spaces, what are the concepts which does not carry over. For example, notion of distance allowed you to define what is called an open set what is a closed set and then in terms of open sets, closed sets you define what is compactness, connectedness and so on. So all this concept you can study on metric spaces, you can study continuous functions on metric spaces and so on, right. So what are the things possible, in what form they generalize, in what form they do not generalize, we will not prove, we will only give you exposition that there is a concept of metric space which looks like a general set with notion of distance. You can do some things which you have done on real line R1, R2 and so on. There are some things you cannot do. For example, in R2 itself, you cannot compare points. In the real line, you can compare. One is bigger than the other, right? In the plane, you cannot say point X1, Y1 is bigger than X2, Y2. Order is gone. So whatever you do with respect to order on real line, you cannot do with respect to order on there is no order on R2 or R3 and so on, right. So we will see, by, by the way, uh, this property is called uh, positive definiteness, distance is positive definite, is non-negative and 0 definitely when x is equal to y. This is called symmetry, the distance is symmetric with respect to x and y. And this property goes by the name of triangle inequality. It is something saying that the sum of two sides of a triangle is always bigger than the third side, right. So it says that thing. So whenever there is a notion of a set, a distance that is called a matrix space. So obvious our example is real line with absolute value, right, that is a matrix space. We will see others, okay, right.